We have an unlikely character found in the Bible today, and we're going to look at briefly a lesson from the life of Balaam. And I'm going to trust that you have read your Bible, that you would have a basic knowledge of, of Balaam. This is the man who had the talking ass. Uh, he wouldn't listen to God, though he proclaimed he was going to. And in Numbers 31, verse 7, And they warred against the Midianites as the Lord commanded, and they slew all the males. And they slew the kings of Midian, beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Eli, Rechem, and Zer, and Hur, and Reba, five kings of Midian. Balaam, also the son of Beor, was slain with the sword. So when when the children of Israel avenged themselves of the Midianites, the man that caused this trouble is slain in the very battle of the avenging. And we got the battle of Beor. Now, if we go to chapter 22, Numbers 22, verse 5. This is Balak, the son of Zippor, king of the Moabites. He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, there he is, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river, the land of the children of his people, to call him, say, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth. This is Israel. And they abide over against me. And what Balak has done is he's hired Balaam, a man that has the character, who has a authority over cursing and blessing. Balak is afraid of Israel. And he wants Balaam to curse them. I'll protect him for the Moabites. 24, Numbers 24, verse 10. And Balak, anger was kindled against Balaam, because Balaam didn't curse Israel three times. By God, Israel was blessed. And not curse. Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam. And he smote his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam. Now keep Balaam in mind. I call thee to curse my enemies Israel. And behold thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Now therefore flee thou to thy place. Go home. I thought to promote thee to great honor. But lo the Lord has kept thee back from honor. So, Balak says to Balaam, I'm not paying you. You have not produced the goods of cursing. But you have blessed the people that I wanted to curse. They are the children of Israel and they're never to be cursed. God told Abraham in Genesis 12 of, of his seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I will bless them that bless thee. I will curse them that curse thee. You better be on the right side of Israel. You better be on the blessing, the help, the aid, the prayers for the children of Israel. Don't be on the don't be on the Balak side. Surely don't be on the Balaam side. So Balaam does what God told him to do. He does not curse them. But that's not what. And Balaam said to Balak, verse 12, Spake I not to thy messengers, which sent me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own mind. But what the Lord saith, that will I speak. The Lord said, Don't you curse them, you bless them. 
Give him that much credit. But that's not the end of the tale. Verse 25. In Israel, I mean, chapter 25. In Israel, bowed and shit him, and the people began to commit whoredoms with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifice of their gods, Moabites. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. Israel joined themselves to Baal, Peor, Baal, God. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. So, after Balaam, where he could not curse Israel, Balaam blessed them three times. Balak gets angry, and the very, very next thing you see among the Moabites who is of Balak, Israel is committing fornication, he's committing adultery, he's vowed in whoredoms, and he's sacrificing to other gods and partaking of the food of the gods. That's important. Because when you go to 2 Peter, Second Peter 2, 15. Second Peter 2, 15. Which has forsaken the right way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And have gone astray. That's Numbers 25. Old Testament. Following the way of Balaam, the sower of Besor. That's the New Testament spelling for Beor. But this Balaam, who loved the wages of righteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with the man. All right, so we know that this is the Balaam of numbers that you know, the ass speaking to him. He has gone the way of Baal, forsaken the right way of God. All right, he blessed him. He blessed him. He blessed him. But Peter says that there was a forsaking of God's way, gone astray. That he loved the wages of righteousness. Balaam sought. I can't go beyond what the Lord said. Balaam went. Because he wanted the paycheck. Jude 11. Woe unto them, for they've gone the way of Cain, murder, wickedness, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. So we got a false way of Balaam. We've got the error of Balaam. That Peter tells us that he was interested in the wages of unrighteousness. Jude writes to us greed and error of Balaam for reward. Though we read in Numbers, oh, you know, you go home, I'm not going to pay you. In the heart of Balaam is he wanted that check. And as a result, scripture with scriptures, Balaam has a false way of unrighteous. He has an error way of greed. Revelation 2, 14. 
But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. There is a way of Balaam. There is an error of Balaam. And there is a teaching. Doctrine means teaching of Balaam. Balaam taught something. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel? He said, Where was that in Numbers? It wasn't recorded. What that is in Numbers is chapter 25. Balaam told Balak, All right, if you want God to be angry with Israel, you get your people to fornicate with them. You get your people to adulterize with them. You get your people to commit whoredom with them. You get your people to get Israel to worship the gods of Moabite. You get Israel to be involved with, with, this, with the fellowship of the gods. And God will be angry. Put a stumbling block for the children of Israel to eat things, sacrifice unto idols, and commit fornication. That's important. Because look at Numbers 25 again. Israel bowed and shit them, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. The people and call and they called the people on the sacrifice of their gods, and the people did eat and bow down to their gods. Revelation 2. That's the doctrine of Baal. The way of Balaam is. And let them commit whoredoms. Let them sacrifice to the gods. Let them go against Jehovah. And the way of, of Balaam is, take this route. Leave Jehovah for the gods. Now, Galatians 6, 7 says, Be not deceived, God's not marked. For whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. So if you go back to Numbers 31, after Israel's done that, look at chapter 31. And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Okay? 25, chapter 25. Afterwards shalt thou be gathered unto thy people. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm yourselves unto war. Well, what do you do with that with the Jehovah Witnesses? We can't go to war. We can't go to battle. We can't have nothing to do with war. The Bible says thou shalt not kill. Well, God told Moses to tell Israel, get in there and wipe them out. Many times God does that. Arm yourselves unto war and let them go against the Midianites. Avenge the Lord of Midian in every tribe of thousands throughout the tribe of Israel. War. Okay. Back to verse 8. 31 8. And they slew the kings of Midian, beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Eva, or Evi, Rechem, and Zer, and Hur, and Reba, five kings of Midian. Balaam, also the son of Beor, they slew with a sword. Balaam never went home. He went home or he came back. Maybe he went home and said, you know what, I got an idea. And maybe he went back to the king and said, Bela, try this. You propose Israel to get in the way of the teaching of error that God will be so angry with them, he'll destroy them. And what happened? Israel goes into the future. Israel is still standing today. Israel is still a nation of God. And Balaam was killed with the people that he said, get Israel to sin. And you know what, Christian? You're going to be involved in a sin. You may have a way of sin. You may have an error of sin or a teaching of sin. And there are people out there who teach sin. They teach improper doctrine. They have a way that's not holy. And it's error. 
And what may cause your death, the wages of sin is death, is that very way, error, and doctrine that you get involved in, like Balaam. I know somebody, you know, I'm going to smoke, and everybody causes me to smoke, and, and I'm going to get my cigarettes, and, you know, I don't care what you have to say. Died of lung cancer. A tragic end with, with a lot of coughing in the hospital. And died no one by that person's side in hospice. You might get involved with, with sexual pleasures that Israel got into. And you might die of a VD. You might get involved in alcohol and drinking and all that, and you may get cirrhosis of the liver. Your sin, the wages of your sin, and the reaping and sowing, except for the mercy of God, Balaam was killed among the people that he told them this is how you can get God angry with Israel and destroy them. And he is destroyed. You can be destroyed by false teaching. You can be destroyed by a false religion. You can be destroyed by any kind of sin. Friend, it's time to repent. It's time to get right with God if you are saved. You need to forsake your sin. You need to get serious prayer about your sin. You need to get God to forgive you your sin and give you victory over your sin. God can do it. He's done it for me. And if you're lost and you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus, you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Or not only will you die, but you will die and end up in a lake of fire that burneth forever. 